Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is an introduction to encapsulation and it's part one of a two-part tutorial. It's going to pull up my website here to javacjava.com, click on begin, scroll down on the Java tutorials to encapsulation part one. And basically I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here, but this is part one of a two-part tutorial on the concept of encapsulation. It is almost impossible to explain the concept of encapsulation with just wording alone. You must first understand the problem that encapsulation resolves. By the end of part two, you should have a good grasp on what encapsulation is. An instance variable is a variable declared in a class that has a separate copy or value for each object created. In my instance variable tutorial, we saw how we could directly set the values of the instance variables for each object we created. Now what do we do if we want to control what values can be stored in, the, in an instance variable? We can use a setter method to set the value of an instance variable. We can get the value of an instance variable by using a getter method. Becoming familiar with getter and setter methods is the key to understanding the concept of encapsulation. So what is a setter method? Well, a setter method is kind of, let's just use some source code to explain it here. So um, we've got our box class here, right? And inside of our class body here, we've got three instance variables, length, height, and width. Now, when we create an object out of, uh, of type box, right? we can set these instance variables directly from the the program that we created use you know reference variable dot you know what height equals well we could set it to negative 20 if we wanted to so height can be directly set to a negative value and that's not good especially when we're calculating the volume of our box so how do we how do we prevent someone doing that or you know uh, well at this point we won't directly prevent them but we'll give them We'll, we'll provide a way for us to check um, what value comes in and make sure that it's a valid value. So we're going to do that by creating a setter method. And this, will be a, uh, this is going to set the height. So basically, we've got our set height method name, and it's going to return a Boolean type based on whether or not the, the parameter uh, that they're passing in for the height is, a valid, is valid within the number range we want it to be. Okay. And we've got a single parameter here called height param, and it's an int data type. So we're going to check to see if height param is greater than or equal to 1, which, okay, that's a valid value. We're, we're, we're cool with that. And then we're going to set the height, which is this instance variable up here, equal to the height param, which is the value coming in as the parameter. And then we're going to return true, which then, of course, you know from my previous tutorials, just basically execution falls through and back to the calling uh, method. So when they called the method. So, but let's say for example, height param is equal to zero or negative one or something like that. This will return false. This will fail here on the if statement and this will return false. And then basically they can handle that when they called the method there using some sort of trap or something like that. So, but of course the documentation that we would write for the set height um, method will basically say, you know, it has a return value of whether or not a valid parameter was specified. So anyway, let's go ahead and move down here and talk about getter methods real quick. Now getter methods will be discussed in detail in part two. Um, so but basically here we've got the same thing, but we can get this value directly now and in part two we won't. And because we won't be able to get this value directly, we have to be able to give the, you know, the programmer who's using our, our object, our box class, right, um, access to get this height value here. So I'm just going to create this getter method called get height. It'll return an int data type and it'll just simply return the value of the height variable inside of here. Right? Okay. So I'll talk about that a little bit more in part two, but let's go ahead and put some code in, code to work here so I can really kind of explain this and show you how this works a lot better here. We got the box class up here, right? I'm going to highlight all that. I'm going to select control C to copy or right click and copy. Let's move this off screen here. Let's go to start search, type in CMD for the command prompt. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to um, start run, type in uh, CMD. 
open up the command prompt. First thing we're going to do is type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you see an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before you continue on with these tutorials. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash to change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. We're going to make a directory called Java MD. Now I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you, CD Java. And then we're going to make another directory, and we're going to call this encapsulation1, okay? CDE tab, we're going to change directories to the encapsulation1 folder. First thing we're going to do is create the box class. Note, notepad box.java, right? And let's go ahead and paste our, our box in there, stuff it in there, file, save. So we've still got our instance variables. Um, and then we've got our setter methods here where we can set the length, set the height, set the width, right? And each one of those will only set the, the length or the height or the width based on whether the, the range is valid, right? The valid parameter there. Um, then I got a getter method here just to show you kind of how these work here. Introduce you that before part two, which um, get height will return an int data type and just simply return anything that's in height. And then we've also got this other method in here for calculating the volume, and it'll just return the length times height times width, whatever value that is. So let's go ahead and save this guy here. Let's pop back here, clear our screen, type in Java C, box.java to compile it. No errors. Let's type in a directory. We got our box.java. Dot, our box.class file, which contains our bytes, Java, the Java byte, source code stuff, compiled, sorry. Let me rephrase that whole last sentence there. <laughs> the box.class contains the Java byte code, which is the compiled um, box.java source code. So. Let's now create another file called notepad encapsulation1.java. Okay, encapsulation1.java is our source code file name here. And let's bring our browser back on screen here. Let's scroll down here and we'll highlight this. Control C to copy because you don't want to watch me type in all this stuff, that's for sure. Control V to paste. File, save. Okay, so encapsulation one is the um, class declaration. I'm gonna grab some water here. And we've got our main method entry point right here. First thing we're gonna do is initialize a reference variable B of box data type, right? And set it equal to a new box object. And then we're going to Using the dot operator, we're going to set the length, the instance variable of the box object equal to 10, right? And I'm gonna pop back here. And this is the instance variable length right up here. So that value will hold 10, right? We're gonna set height equal to negative two, directly set the instance variable to a value we didn't expect. And then the width equals five, right? And we are going to go ahead and print out the volume of our box and the height of our box. And we're gonna print out the height of our box by directly accessing the height instance variable. Okay, let's go ahead and save this here. Compile it and run it. Strip off that, okay. So the volume of our box is negative 100 and the height of our box is negative two. So we've done some unexpected stuff to that box class. When we created that box class, you know, we really didn't want it to return negative val values here, okay? So let's go ahead and take the next step to um, understanding encapsulation. Let's pop back here to the website here. And basically, you know, we got this value negative 100, negative two, and that's not good. I will now use setter methods to set the length, width, and height. So we're gonna overwrite Copy and overwrite. So highlight, control C, or right click and copy, right? And we're gonna overwrite this code into the encapsulation. We'll highlight everything, delete it, control V, or you can right click and select paste. Anyway, we'll save this here. So what we've got here 
is we've still got our single declaration statement, a reference variable b, box type, and it's equal to a new box object. I commented out those three lines there, and now I added in a simple little if statement, because you'll remember that, um, if you remember my, my setter methods here, right, return a Boolean value if, if it actually is able to set the length value, right? Otherwise, it would return false. So we just simply check in here if b.setLength10 and b.setHeight is equal to, well, all right, getting all tongue-tied here, sorry, and b, and we'll invoke the setHeight method and pass it negative 2, and b.setWidth as uh, 5 for the argument, right? And so what that'll, that'll do is all of these, this will return back true, right? This will return back false. And of course, using these, this is the short circuit operator. So because this returned back false, it doesn't even bother to set the width here on five, right? That just gave me a great little idea to show you how that works there. Just um, <clears throat> completely off topic here, but just to reiterate, um, If we try to get the, the width right there, right? If we display the width, this is just showing you that, in fact, the double AND is a short circuit operator. A single AND would execute um, every single one of these, right? But the double AND short circuits out of here because this is false. So our width right here should return back zero, but that's off topic here. Um, yep, they don't want to include that in there right away. But okay, so the volume of our box is we're going to calculate our volume, right? And then we're going to get our height only if all these equal to true. Otherwise, we're going to print unexpected value in one of the dimension arguments. And that would never hit right there. So let's drop it down here. And we'll just get this directly, right? So the width, save, bada bing, bada bing. We'll recompile this, rerun it. Unexpected value in one of the dimensions argu argument, dimension arguments. The width of our box is zero. So I'm just kind of did a little uh, a little two for there to show you how the double and um, you know short circuits everything. So this didn't even get set right down there. So basically, um, you know, if you don't remember my and operator here, go ahead and look at that tutorial again there. But I just thought that was an interesting opportunity to show you that. Let's go ahead and save that. So the way to fix this here. Actually, we'll go ahead and compile that and get that out of there. Sorry, sometimes I get off track. And unexpected value in one of the dimension arguments, right? So now we can set this equal to 2. We can save that. Come back up here, compile it, run it. And now we get the volume of our box is 100 and the height of our box is 2. So we've taken the first step for encapsulation here by um, doing method uh, setters, right, that can allow us to basically make sure that the value, the arguments are, you know, within what we're expecting, what, what we intended when we created this class there. And then that stuff can't be used in ways that we really didn't even imagine when we created it there, okay? Let's go ahead and close out of this and close out of that and close out of this. So just for a final thought on the part one there. At this point, there is nothing that prevents a programmer from directly accessing the instance variables. In other words, they're not forced to use the new setter methods that we just created. So how do we make the instance variables not accessible? Well, I'm going to cover that in part two of this tutorial. But uh, that concludes part one of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.